Wildlife Management Program is a very special, one-of-a-kind, unique program that we have here on the waterfront to create a cohesive environment between wildlife and humans. So essentially one environment where everyone gets along and can share the space in a very um, cohesive, kind manner. So some of the animals that we work a lot with are seabirds, seals, sunfish, and then our Cape Clawless Otters of which we have a very small population here on the waterfront that have a very big impact. Very fascinating animals. So part of managing the wildlife within the v waterfront, we monitor their movements and their numbers. So each animal has a different set of, um, sort of complications in this environment in dealing with the urban environment. And we will manage that by looking at the animal's natural behaviors and then monitoring that. So for example, with the seals, we patrol the jetties to try and prevent them from getting onto the jetties and the vessels and roll the, allow them their safe spaces on the seal platforms. And with things like the otters, We'll monitor their movements by moving around on kayaks or bicycles to follow them around the waterfront and just forewarn any humans that they might be nearing to encountering that the otters are approaching. And that way we can reduce any areas where there could potentially be an interaction or a negative interaction. So otters are part of the musculate family. Uh, so within that family you've got skunks, weasels, polecats, honey badgers and essentially it just means that they have a musk gland and that's what makes them musculids. Uh, further than that they're mammals and I do believe you know, that they're very intelligent, very inquisitive animals. The natural habitat for otters is near a freshwater source and with lots of foliage to provide cover for them to have their halts or den sites. They'll have several den sites within their territory and they like to have a lot of foliage and undergrowth to go and rest in during the day, sand to roll in, but the most vital point for them is fresh water. So they have to get into fresh water at least once a day to drink as well as wash their fur. Um, that doesn't mean that they don't go into salt water, they will go into salt water to hunt and feed, but at least once a day they have to go into fresh water. Otters are territorial animals, uh, generally what will happen is the male will have roughly a 10 kilometer range of territory. Within that 10 kilometer range there will be several females that have much smaller territories, theirs are around 1 to 1.5 kilometers in size and the male basically moves through his 10 kilometer uh, territory visiting each female and not actually staying with any one female for any duration of time. The male doesn't really fulfill any parenting role. He will mate the female and he'll protect the territory and protect the females within his territory from any external dangers. But essentially the female is responsible for raising the pups and teaching them how to hunt. So one of the differences we've seen develop between urban otters and wild otters is this territory situation. So within the urban environment it's not possible for a male otter to have a 10 kilometer range. So their ranges are much smaller, around two kilometers. And instead of having five or six females with ranges within, they're actually now forming family units. So you'll have a male and possibly two females sharing the same little territory with a male protecting the females and also fulfilling more of a parenting role in terms of being around the pups while they're being raised. I find otters to be fascinating creatures. I, find, I think that they are very inquisitive, uh, very engaging. They absolutely make use of all parts of their environment for their benefit and that makes them actually a very difficult animal to manage and a very challenging animal to manage. But that is what I enjoy is finding these challenging situations. Urban otters are found in an in a, um, urban environment which is built up with a lot of buildings, uh, traffic, cars and a lot of people. At the waterfront, we've established that we have a, a family or a group of otters that um, are called urban otters because they've figured out how to live in this urban environment. There are a lot of dangers uh, for these animals living in urban areas. Uh, obviously, you've got things like traffic, getting hit by cars is, is a massive one. So the urban otters have also got uh, people to contend with in terms of behavior and domesticated animals like dogs and cats. Um, so we, we are still studying the behavior on that, but so far they seem to be getting along quite well. People are the ones that need um, a little bit more training 
um, <clears throat> because they are cute and cuddly and people do want to go up to them and touch them so there's a lot of please stay back and, and don't touch them but other than that they yeah we seem to be working it out urban otters are um, in a way territorial still as i said we are still finding out exactly how territorial they are but they do seem to have taken some ownership um, over specific areas within the waterfront um, especially over the fresh water sources that they've got here so one of the things that the vna waterfront um, have done is that and the resident society is that um, this was one of the freshwater pools that the otters were swimming in and there was a bit of conflict with uh, residents in the pool and the otters so it was actually a really quick fix these doors were always left open now they're closed and they put on this extra fencing so that they can't get through um, so that's one of the things you know just a small thing that we put in place to try and eliminate some of the conflict Okay, so this is one of the areas that there, that there was conflict in, in the swimming pool. Uh, there was a ladder on the left hand side here, so when the otters climbed up the ladders, they came face to face with the people in the swimming pool. So a simple thing just to try and eliminate that conflict in this freshwater pool was to move the ladder from there around the corner over there. Um, and then what we've also tried in this area are these rolling pipes, so the otters can't actually get a grip on this area here. And so far, so far that's actually eliminated any um, further issues within the swimming pool. But again, taking this freshwater source away from them has meant that it has more pressure on another pool. Um, again, so that's why we're giving them an alternative freshwater source. So the VNA waterfront have put um, quite a few, or helped us put quite a few things in place to facilitate the urban otters. Uh, one thing we're going to do is actually give them an alternative source of fresh water, again to take the pressure off the freshwater swimming pools and the ponds within the hotels, um, and potentially a nice island that's got a lot of vegetation as well. Um, and they've also been, been fantastic is that they've given us an, an otter monitor whose full-time position is actually just to follow the otters around um, and educate people around the otters behavior um, and also it's a great opportunity then to get footage and research the otters behavior. We've got some um, capture cams um, around that we were actually using for the seals so we put them in place for the otters because the otters are going under buildings and under platforms and um, they're still very active at night uh, and places that, that we don't that we aren't able to to get to them all the time so we've set up some catch cameras around the waterfront and um, yeah we've got some absolutely amazing footage of, of how they behave and also amazingly enough a lot of sound from them so they seem to have quite a big vocabulary that we that that will be actually be the next thing that we want to start start researching I'm an author monitor for the Two Oceans Aquarium Foundation. Um, I work in the VNA waterfront and do wildlife management for this area. I start my day with just some chicks, which is all along the canal, uh, which where we are sitting now, and uh, see if I can find any traces of otter scat or see if they've been active in the morning uh, if we lack we find some maybe wet footprints or trails and that is how we can find where otters are currently um, if i find any footprints i would then uh, follow them until i find or a otter or the closest thing to a hiding place for an otter and once i have that um, if i have any cameras available i'll fetch the cameras I am putting the cameras there just to check what their movements are. Um, we're also checking what time they are sleeping, what times they are active, uh, when they are coming back and what they are coming back with. Sometimes they would bring like a fish or a crab. So we definitely like more people to see and experience otters or just to have uh, some kind of idea that uh, these animals aren't uh, aggressive or they're not 
out to hurt anyone. They're just going about their normal days. So if anyone does find themselves in a situation where they are in quite close proximity to an otter, the best thing they can do is to back off, back out of the situation as calmly as they can. They must at all costs try their best to not engage with that otter at all. If the otter starts approaching them, they can just back off a bit faster, but rather try and avoid any form of interaction. Um, the reasons for this, obviously one is that there is a risk of the otter possibly nipping the person and, and injuring them. But more than that, the more interaction otters have with people, the more habituated they become. And further down the line, the more dangerous it becomes for them within the urban environment. If you were to come across an otter that has been injured, for example, on, on our coastline or up one of our rivers, you find an otter that appears to be ill or injured, the best thing you need to do is back off a bit, keep your eyes on the animal and contact one of the authorities. So there's several groups that have been involved in otter rescues. Uh, one is being the Two Oceans Aquarium Foundation. The other is the Cape of Good Hope SBCA's Wildlife Unit, as well as City of Cape Town and Cape Nature. My favorite thing about my job, hmm, it's just getting to spend time with otters basically, sitting down and just watching them. Um, if I'm lucky, sometimes they do come up to me and they get a bit curious, but yeah, that's just a, a blessing, I guess. <laughs> I've got a very, uh, I've got a soft spot for otters from my first encounter many, many years ago um, in Strace Bay. Uh, they, they love, they're highly, highly intelligent little mammals, um, obviously apex predators, so you take them quite seriously, but they seem to have a very um, cheeky way about them, so it's quite amazing to be able to see them on a daily basis, like right out in the open during the day, but with that comes responsibility to actually try and make it work. A big part of why we are wanting to protect wild animals within the urban space is that Wild spaces are decreasing in size all the time and urban sprawl is growing. So there's less space for these animals and the fact that they can cohabit with humans within an environment shows that it is actually still, even though it's urban, a fairly healthy environment. If that animal is still able to find food, avoid injury, avoid predators and survive and thrive and breed, that means that we are providing an environment that is healthy for that animal, even though it's not the ideal in terms of being a wild space.